Welcome to Sound Health on Lagos Television. I am Ola Sumbo Mudupe. Thanks for always staying with us. Extreme weather conditions like heat wave, um, flooding, um, vector bond diseases outbreak are as a result of climate change. The United Nations says about 3.6 billion people are already living in areas that are highly vulnerable to climate change. How do we live with this and how do we um, live above climate health conditions? Please stay tuned. The conversation begins after this break. Heat waves, our floods, our droughts, our storms, about 7 million deaths a year that we suffer from, from air pollution. I would say there are three kinds of health emergencies that can be triggered by climate change. First is those direct emergencies, heat waves, wildfires, floods, droughts, and so on. The same burning of fossil fuels, which is driving the climate crisis, also contributes to about 7 million deaths a year that we suffer from, from air pollution. Climate crisis is undermining all of the environmental determinants of health. It's making it harder to provide water and sanitation or food systems. And it's actually rising sea levels, which are making some parts of the world uh, uninhabitable. In fact, the most common uh, form of health emergency, the most deadly form of health emergency that we have now is extreme heat. And the climate crisis is only making that a much bigger problem. Often that's in the form of uh, providing relief after a population is hit by a flood or a storm or a drought. But what we're also having to do is to support countries to make them resilient to repeated events. So we're having to build in long-term resilience to the, the health threats presented by climate change. Health on Lagos Television. Joining us via Zoom this evening is Dr. Jamil Ganyu, a consultant public health physician, and he is going to share his expertise on the impacts of climate change on health. Good evening, Dr. Ganyu, and thanks for obliging us. Thank you very much for having me this evening. Um, before now, the United Nations says about 3.6 billion people are already living in areas that are highly vulnerable to climate change. Let us know what climate change is and, and how do we relate to this condition? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the idea of climate change has to do with the uh, general global warming. Uh, usually it happens this way. There's what you call the greenhouse gases. Uh, what they do is that um, usually when the sun hits the the planet that is the earth, uh, then usually it, it kind of uh, the heat is very radiated. But unfortunately, some of these heat are being trapped by the greenhouse gases, which include the uh, the include carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and others, and halogenated gases. So that by forming a kind of blanket, uh, which prevents some of those heat from from actually escaping out of the uh, of the of the heart. So usually uh, it has its own advantage. The advantage is that without them, the the entire health will not be a kind of cold and become unbearable for people to live on. Okay. But unfortunately, uh, the ideal temperature actually for 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 which is inhabitable is 15 degrees. Hmm. And uh, usually uh, uh, when this there is excessiveness of this gas. The heat, the most of the heat get trapped in the uh, among these uh, 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 among the greenhouse gases, which now make the uh, the, uh, the entire when you get overheated, that is where you see of containing the uh, more issue of heat wave, people not finding it difficult as we are experiencing at the moment, and it has its own both health and other environmental effects. So that is how the issue of uh, climate change occurs. Okay, before we look at the impact on our health now, is this condition caused, is it a natural um, condition or influenced by population activities of, of humans? Uh, actually, it is uh, purely man-made and 
the joint of this gas, especially uh, carbon dioxide, is being generated through combustion of fossils. And, uh, and you all know that uh, that it has to do with combustion of engines, which can be through our, our vehicles we use, generators, all those high uh, uh, machines we use for both industrial and domestic uh, uh, activities. And also, we can also generate some of these, like the methane, when through land uh, through land feeding, you know, that are usually uh, through, during combustion of some of the waste we actually generated. So those can also give all that. And also Nigeria, we can also get it through gas, all these natural gases that are being used for once uh, for commercial and for domestic purposes. And like for instance, hydroelectric power, whatever we're uh, generating the uh, uh, companies, uh, we can actually, you know, some of those gases are being generated through that, through that. So those are different ways. It make it's purely money. And also deforestation has also been attributed to one of those because you know um photosynthesis and if you can um uh, usually during photosynthesis carbon dioxide is being utilized and oxygen being released into space so where where uh, 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 there are deforestation some of those activities do not take place so some of those are uh, usually for carbon dioxide can be uh, recycled into the carbon cycle it will take a very long, even thousands of years. It can take thousands of years before some of them can get absorbed. So these are some of the uh, challenges we have with that. And for the methane, which contain nitrogen, nitro, like, uh, which contain nitrogen and so on, may take uh, up to like 12 years before they can get to the back into the cycle. So these are some of the actually ways by which uh, the issue of uh, climate change uh, actually occur. Okay, so Dr. Gani, how do we limit the effects of this man-made um, condition? Um, because um, according to the United Nations, about 3.6 billion people are already living in areas that are highly vulnerable to climate change. And the population is about 7 billion already. So how do we mm -hmm. limit the effects of uh, this um, development? Yes, we can actually limit it when we look at how the whole thing come about. Uh, and the, uh, some of the ways are as follows: uh, the need for us to, uh, you know, invest into all these low energy devices, uh, like like the bulbs we use at home. Uh, everything actually has to do with uh, uh, behavioral change, health education, and so on. on the use of alternative energy, uh, and, uh, which, as I said, like use of uh, low energy bulb at home. Also, we can also use uh, 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 other source of uh, power generation, like installation of solar energy. It may not appear um, expensive, but if government can invest in that, also wind use of wind power, uh, wind mode of generation of uh, 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 power, electricity can also be an alternative. And also, uh, there are many many countries now are now inv investing in uh, alternative uh, 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 automobile. Uh, um, so what I mean by that is that the, the, the use of uh, electric uh, motor cars, also some use train, uh, all these uh, 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 metro lines, buses that are being powered by electricity. I mean, that are being powered by um, uh, by true alternative source, uh, maybe energy and say electricity. So I think through that uh, we can achieve that. And apart from alternative uh, uh, source of uh, generation apart from the use of fossil fuel in our homes we can also carry out a uh, kind of reuse recycling uh, 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 techniques in, in our in the use of our domestic uh, products for instance we can some electronics we can instead of buying a new one when it gets spoiled we can decide to you know fix and repair them hmm. and use them I know okay. people will not like it but it has also been suggested that People can also patronize second hand and use goods uh, instead of buying the new one because when you look at the process by which they are being disposed, they also generate uh, carbon dioxide and all those things and gases which, are, which we are trying to limit uh, as, as much as uh, possible. Also, we need to discourage deforestation. And I know all these uh, rural urban migrations contributed. Some of the farmland 
those areas where we have uh, vegetation and so on, they've been replaced by housing and all that. So too much of that also, you know, contributed to uh, to to that. So okay. we need to reduce how we cut our trees and so on because they serve as trees serve as reservoir for actually absorbing carbon dioxide. So we need even when we cut down trees, we need to replace them as much as possible, which is very very uh, also very. Uh, important. Also, around, uh, we need to have our, and uh, we need to encourage our those that work in the factories to buy, uh, you know, machines that consume less energy. Uh, and where it is not uh, uh, possible, they should plant trees around those areas, and vegetation, and so. I think all those processes actually will help. And again, I'm happy. Nigeria is part of the intergovernmental um, um, uh, partnership regarding. Okay. The, the International Governmental uh, uh, Partnership on Climate Change. So, I want to believe uh, that is, and we'll be looking for different, uh, and we're looking for investors that will assist in terms of developing alternative, alternative uh, energy source. Okay. Many countries have actually been opportune to have started that. I was sometimes I was in Tanzania to see a lot of what we do regarding low energy uh, stocks, and I think uh, we too should look in that direction. And I want to, by so doing, I think uh, Nigeria we have learned with sunlight. So what part of the country we have wins for we 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 can. We, I think it's, it's time for us to have impact on that of fossil fuel, as I said, we will be solely, solely dependent on. And as I've said, I'm happy some states have started uh, you know, uh, procuring buses that are you know, uh, electrically powered, which I think those are another uh, uh, ways I think we can do that. All right. And we cannot be able to achieve that if we don't have policy backup. So that need to actually uh, 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 enact policies that will encourage uh, another alternative source of uh, power generation apart from fossil fuel. All right, Dr. Ghani, to a layman now, um, all you listed are more of environmental factors. They always say that would have no impact on my health. Does climate change impact our health at all, be it mental or physical? Yes, it has. Like for instance, currently people are battling with there is general heat everywhere, you know. It's a strong heat wave up almost everywhere. Even in the coast, we are witnessing that. And that may lead to its uh, exhaustion. Case may be. So, uh, people are not finding out when that kind of situation, when you have a, 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 an environment that is not conducive, your ability to put in your bed with an issue, people get that easily. They will have lack of concentration as well. So these are some of the things that uh, people will not like putting it. They'll be so tired. You know, when people sweat a lot, you know what it is, they will not be so comfortable and so on. And I think uh, that's one aspect. Another aspect of it is the fact that um, when you look at the in, uh, it also uh, uh, brings about breeding of uh, some uh, vectors, uh, like uh, and, uh, mosquitoes, so that will be uh, possibility of high cases of malaria that people are being bitten by mosquito and so on. And also, apart from uh, uh, malaria, there are other vector borne diseases which the, the current uh, weather condition can also encourage. So, these are different ways. And again, apart from that, if in the uh, 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 climate change can lead to flooding, which we all uh, uh, currently there is a gradual melting of the glacier in the Arctic region of the world. And uh, through that process, the, the, the sea tide is getting elevated. Uh, apart from that, you know, it also causes expansion of water. Through that, there is that possibility that occasionally we normally witness uh, uh, flooding in some part, a certain part of the, the world. And in, in Nigeria, is not an exception. And when there is flood, you know, the diversity effect will be caused. It will destroy will destroy infrastructure. Uh, it, will dis it will cause the displacement with associated economic losses and so on and in the event when it is not properly managed it can serve as a source of an uh, outbreak of uh, common diseases like cholera and so on so these are uh, different ways uh, uh, it uh, the current climate change can affect health 
And apart from that, mental, it can also cause mental, uh, mental problem because uh, where people are so concerned about what will happen, uh, especially in uh, in uh, flood prone areas, or people are not enjoying, you know, the current heat situation in the country, so that may cause some level of mental uh, problem. People think they are having that anxiety, depression, and so. So these are uh, different ways by which. Uh, uh, that some people have it rushes, so so depending on uh, on the individual and how they're able to you know cope with the 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 corporate damage impact. Yes. All right, Doctor Ganyu, before we let you go now, kindly you share with us how we can cope or live with these extreme um, ash weather condition. Well, the only way is to. It is assurance that uh, it is not going to be forever, you know. Uh, it's, it, well, it's, it's going to be similar just for the meantime. Gradually, we are approaching the rainy season, I think. So, that that should give us some level of comfort uh, just for the meantime. And meanwhile, as we are now, we try to stay more of indoor. That is what is being encouraged. Unless we need to go to work. And for those who can afford AC, they put AC in their houses. And for those who can afford fire, they use it. And another thing for us to use light buildings. When, when, when outside, when leaving our homes, not, uh, not wearing the uh, heavy clothing at this moment, I don't think should be discouraged. So, light clothing and so on, purely made of cotton and so on. And we encourage people as much as possible, we can take your back uh, um, more frequently at uh, this period of time. And again, that we encourage that uh, we eat more vegetable, take more fluids. And because we uh, we did correct it, people are prone to dehydration and so on. And that may put somebody into it, see, uh, stroke and sickle. So we are exhaustion. So we are going to take more water, take more fluid, fluid and eat more vegetables that contain vitamins and so on, so that we can use that your tool and boost our immunity. And again, as I said, if you don't have business being outside, you stay in your home and you know, enjoy your home. That's essentially. Uh, my advice. Okay, so I know I have said before we let you go, there are some people that are living with underlying condition. So how well can they cope with the condition? Triggers. Uh, they try as much as possible to avoid those triggers. And uh, ensure that they are, with, uh, they are healing as much as possible. And if they don't have any business being outside all the time, they stay indoor. And uh, another thing that they should uh, also ensure that uh, they take their medication uh, as prescribed by a doctor, and uh, where, wherever uh, uh, they have attack and it go beyond something that can be managed at all, I will advise them that uh, medical practitioner for appropriate treatment. Doctor, I think I'm not Doctor Jamil Ganyo, consultant, public health physician. Thank you so much for your thoughts on um, the impact of climate change on our health. Thank you very much. For having me this evening. I have been speaking with Dr. Jaime Ugani, consultant public health physician, on how to limit the impacts of um, climate change on our health. Sound Health continues with trending health report from around the world. Please stay tuned. <music>
It is still sound health on Lagos Television. More to come in a moment. During my practice for the last 20 years, I have been seeing these black deposits on the lungs, which is an evidence of the air pollution outside. Air pollution impacts lungs in a very bad way. They are the portal of entry. The approach has to be preventing the air from getting polluted. And if we go into the causes, we realize that unrestricted use of fossil fuels, whether it is coal, whether it is oil, or it is gas. This is one of the major drivers of air pollution and climate change. So controlling the main source, that is fossil fuels, is the way to go. The price of air pollution is paid by our lungs. Well, this is where we say thank you on today's episode of Sound Health. Hope you've been enlightened on how to um, limit the impacts of climate change, the ash weather conditions, or how to live with it at this time. For comments and inquiries, or you have topics you would like us to treat, please send SMS to 0035826603 or follow us on social media at LTV Social hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice. Thank you.